Well, first up, the Ghana Microfinance Institution's network, GAMFIN, is calling for a more robust structure to cushion the industry against shocks. The network uh, says it has observed with concern how some financial institutions are struggling as a result of the domestic debt exchange program. According to Executive Director Yao Jinfi, a collaborative effort from the regulator and various stakeholders would be key to support the growth of the sector. He spoke to Joy Business at the 13th Annual General Meeting of the Ghana Association of Savings and Loans Companies. I'm thinking, looking at the rural communities where there are no banking infrastructure, those areas also need to be touched. But if you move across most of the rural communities, you find a rural bank in a district level, one or two microfinance, and then beyond them, you don't find any financial institution. So in our estimation, we need to cover all those grounds and make sure we give them the kind of product that they also need. But the other side to it is that you also come across areas where you have one or two institutions, but they are limited in terms of products that they, they offer to those communities. And so we expect that they should have a range of products that they can also tap from it so that um, they can all make what you call informed um, choices in terms of financial services and products. Um, I think um, one, it, it takes all of us to come out to develop the infrastructure base. Uh, when I talk of infrastructure base for the financial sector, it's, it's, it's becoming clear to everybody that we don't need the physical structures as we see them over the years. There are some spaces that you need, it may be an agency banking platform, um, a mobile vendor, or any of the groups that can be used or done at a relatively lower cost so that you can, you can have it at those places to attract more people. But of course, there are some that also depends on the kind of um, telecom networks. And if they are not in those areas, you cannot um, use it that much. So all those gaps need to be looked at carefully so that we can all move on as, as a nation. Meantime, financial institutions are being urged to shorten their loan tenure to clients to guard against being tracked by liquidity. Chief Executive Officer of Setra Rural Bank, Michael Edu, says the domestic debt exchange program and the economic downturn uh, demand such measures to keep financial institutions profitable. He also encourages review of investment policies in the short term. Nanaya Aljima has more in this report. For implementation of the domestic debt exchange program, there have been concerns about the current macroeconomic situation and the negative impact on the banking sector. The identified impact included declining profitability, increased pressure on banks' solvency and liquidity. Though the Ghana Financial Stability Support Fund has been established with 15 billion capitalization, it is expected that financial institutions find their own measures to stay in profitability. Chief Executive Officer of Secherua Bank, Michael Edu, is suggesting banks review their loan and investment tenure to ensure they stay liquid and operational. We are aware of the domestic debt issue program recently embarked on by the government of Ghana that has put a lot of stress on the financial institutions. And so strate strategically, financial institutions will be liquidity trapped if care is not taken or if um, uh, plans are not put in place to boost liquidity situation of, of, of banks. Um, so one of the things banks can do is to, is to really look at the, the, the tenure of their loan facilities. Um, giving out loans for too long a time or a period, they can decide to shorten the duration of their loan facilities. And they can also decide to invest in short-term investments that will ensure uh, free, free flow of funds or liquidity so that banks will not be liquidity trapped. Despite the difficult financial year, the Secherua Bank is improving on its mandate of mobilizing excess funds to support SMEs through loans. Board Chairman Dr. Nobo Francis Dente says the bank has also enhanced its corporate social responsibility programs. Part of our corporate social responsibility, we try to help our community, particularly in the area of education, um, health, security. 
there are several initiatives that we have embarked on. Meanwhile, the bank has renovated a six classroom block at Akrowa DA Primary School. We have also identified that there is more support that they will need, and so we've made commitment that we will go ahead and also support them with respect to the other buildings. We are going to help them renovate all the other buildings. And as I said earlier in Chi, we will implore them to ensure that they take good care of what we have offered them. So For Joy News, Nane Ojima reporting. And welcome back to the marketplace. The Ghana Stock Exchange's National Youth Investment Program will be launched uh, tomorrow, July 14, at the University of Ghana Business School. The aim of the program is to develop and nurture competent professionals in the banking, finance, insurance, and capital market industry here in Ghana. But also important is the investment training program, the stock pitch competition, and the capital market quiz competition all intended to inculcate the habit of savings in the youth. Joining me in the studio um, are the marketing manager of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Jerry uh, Boachidankwa, and Kofi Chebuzia, who is executive director of Research Young Investor Network. Uh, happy to have you in the studio uh, to talk about this uh, program. So tell us about the youth investment program, Kofi. Thank you, Daryl. Um, basically, the youth investment program is to equip students or young ones with uh, investment knowledge Mm. to enhance their capability of uh, selecting uh, very good investments for themselves and their, and their colleagues and friends. So um, basically, we engage the students um, on the campuses online. Okay, we engage them to give them this knowledge to ensure that they have the capability. You know, sometimes they go to the, go to the investment banks and, the, in fact, the banks to inquire about products when you enter and you don't know, you don't have any knowledge, okay, it, it kind of gives the advisor a mm -hmm. way to also advise you. So once you're able to ask the relevant questions, the, the, the officer is able to help you in the right way. Uh, Jerry, why is the Ghana Stock Exchange interested in this? Why are you taking it up? Thanks, Daryl. Um, Ghana Stock Exchange, uh, we believe that as a good corporate citizen, we need to impact the lives of the communities where we operate. And you and I know that financial literacy is still low in Ghana. That's and true. so as a company, that is the Ghana Stock Exchange, we decided to partner the Young Investor Network and also um, Central Securities Depository, CSD, to put this program together to help embed financial literacy among the youth. Because you know the youth are the next generation of investors. And they are the future of this country. And when we have the youth becoming more financially literate, uh, it means that they can make the right decisions when it comes to investment. Mm -hmm. And all of us will have a prosperous and a happy nation. So it's a social cause that we are in back. It's not that we are just trying to tick the box as a CSR activity. We believe that there's a lot more we can do to better the lives of people by making sure that they are financially literate. To make right. the right decisions. Yeah, and so I'm told this is three in one. Uh, can you uh, expand further? Okay, so we have the investment training tour where we, as a Young Investors Network, with the, our partners, Ghana Stock Exchange, uh, UMB Investment Holdings Limited, UMB Stock Brokers, mm -hmm. Limited Capital, and so on, we go visit every campus. All right, so that's the investment training tour to impact the knowledge in the students. The next one is the stock pitch competition where we organize a competition between the students. Okay, so they, they are able to pitch a company. You conduct an analysis on a company, economy, industry, and the company itself, come up with evaluation to advise, okay, to advise an investor whether it's, whether it's a good investment or not. Okay, and we have the capital, uh, the investment, the capital, market the, quiz. capital market quiz competition. That is for SHS students. That is uh, where we also uh, encourage competition in the knowledge. Okay, so the students, we ask them questions just like we do in the science and math quiz. Questions and answers, the winner comes. Last year, Accra Academy were the winners of the competition. So um, this is basically about the three programs, all supposed to impact knowledge in the students. Yeah, I mean, you are talking about the fact that you, you want people to be uh, literate when it comes to financial issues. So what are your expectations as a, as a Ghana Stock Exchange? I think last year it was 
amazing. Last year, we visited about 37 senior high schools and tertiary institutions, and we reached about over 5,000 students. So it was really exciting, and you can see the level of enthusiasm and drive among the students. And for us, most importantly, the knowledge that they have acquired with regards to investment and savings. So it's really exciting. And like you mentioned, Accra Academy won. And I've heard that there are some senior high schools in Ghana that say that uh, they are not really science schools, they are business schools. <laughs> so they also need a competition where they can showcase what they've got. So GSC recommends the capital market quiz for the senior high school because this one is more business related. And we believe that it's a competition that will really help them to bring the best out of them, especially the, the schools that classify themselves as business schools. This yeah. is a competition for them. Yeah, and also interesting because uh, of the times we are in where people are, sure, are not sure whether to invest or not, whether it's a good thing to mm -hmm. invest their monies. Um, so it's, it's a great topic uh, or a great program to have. And so I just want us to look ahead to tomorrow's launch. Uh, what are we to expect? Who, are, who, is, who is going to grace the occasion? What's going to be happening there tomorrow? Okay, so tomorrow we have uh, the managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange. We're going to be there. We have the um, director general of the Securities and Exchange Commission, CEO of Nimet Capital, mm -hmm. Abna Brigidi. Um, we also have uh, young investors who will be present, obviously. And uh, the CSD, the, uh, the CEO of CSD will also be there. So the, these have been our partners going for uh, UMB stockbrokers, UMB Investment Holdings Limited. But in all, what we should expect from the students, uh, not just for tomorrow, but in the process that we are going through, we should expect seeing young people who are investment savvy, because the training that we take them through, the workshops that we organize for them, the interaction that we have with them, uh, you should expect that you will see young people who are able to express themselves, not just the academic uh, space, but also mm -hmm. to, to show especially what's going on. So last year, they did some analysis, and that is what is happening in the stock market, especially this year. So we've seen that MTN uh, rising to about 60% and over, uh, total petroleum hitting more than 40%, burns oil hitting up to like 50%. All these things were predicted by the students. Okay, so... Um, what we are doing, we want to give them the practical knowledge. It's not just the book, you, the financial analysis in school. Right. That's, that's not the end of it. Yeah. Jerry, any final words as we wrap up? Okay, so I just want to um, let everybody know that the, these programs, the Ghana Stock Exchange is very committed to these youth investment education programs. And it's not going to stop until every Ghanaian becomes financially literate. That is our ambition. Mm -hmm. um, this year, we are looking at reaching out to over 10,000 students across wow. the country. And so uh, our target is huge. I also want to take this opportunity to also commend the Ministry of Finance and the Central Securities uh, and the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, for their financial literacy programs they are also running. So what we are doing is also to support so that together we can ensure that Ghanaians are financially literate. Um, People can go to our websites, the Ghana Stock Exchange website, www.gnc.com, and then the Young Investor uh, Network website for more information on the program. Once we launch it tomorrow, we'll put some communications on our websites, on our social media platforms. Uh, that is for the GSC and then the mm -hmm. Young Investor Network. And people can go there and get more information. But we are looking forward to a very exciting time tomorrow. And I'm sure once we launch tomorrow, uh, we're going to continue this uh, journey. It's a journey. It's not a right. sprint. This financial <laughs> literacy thing is a journey. Thank you so much, uh, Jerry Boachi Dankwa, who is uh, marketing manager of the Ghana Stock Exchange. Also, Kofi Chebuzia, executive director of Research Young Investor Network. Um, sounds exciting. We'll be looking forward to the launch tomorrow. You're watching The Marketplace. Now, chief executive of the Maxwell Investments Group, Dr. Maxwell Ampong, is urging business leaders to set up training programs for their human resources to promote efficiency in various sectors. According to him, this can be done through partnerships which will ensure effective education to build the local economy. Dr. Ampong was speaking to Joy Business after a short ceremony to announce a collaboration with the Jospon Group to train some supply chain professionals.
We have not necessarily the community inhabitants, the typical community inhabitants here. We have industry leaders, we have company executives, we have a very representative of three embassies here who are to have a taste of what's to come so that when the project goes into full gear, they will be able to translate or to be able to transmit the message of, of what we are trying to do with the KNOC A1 program much more accurately, which is that under um, uh, uh, the SDGs and under AU Agenda 2063, education is very much highlighted and we are trying to do our best as suppliers of impact products and impact services to be able to contribute materially to um, um, to these two uh, um, agenda and in a, in a normal daily 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 activities logistics supply chain forms a very big part of it so that is why we chose the topic of logistics management and procurement and supply chain as the topic for the first training session which is currently ongoing and just as you heard from the lady from Jospon our partnership is going really great we believe that um, no one no, no one is an island we don't want to re re reinvent the wheel they have done so well as a group MIG is um, it's an up-and-coming company we are Ghanaians they are Ghanaians we feel like together we are bigger than uh, 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 the sum of our uh, our part. So we are very happy about this, about this partnership and we are hoping that this, this, this is the beginning of more to come. Thanks for staying with us on the marketplace. Now with artificial intelligence taking shape on the continent, many are wondering how that could impact on the job market and our economy. Well here to share some insight is Philip Gamel, who is Chief Executive of Web and Software. Uh, thanks for joining us Philip. And so I want to just start with how, this, how can businesses and industries prepare for the adoption of AI whilst uh, minimizing job losses? Yeah, first of all, the, the issue about the impact of AI on job losses is an aspect of AI, which is generative AI. Mm -hmm. With generative AI, um, creative work, critical thinking and everything is now augmented by AI in that we are able to produce synthetic data out of nothing. Once the data is trained and you prompt the systems with the kind of results you're you are expecting, the system automatically does this original uh, creation for you that can be tweaked. So it's affecting almost everything that is like routine task about the work that everybody does in the knowledge-based economy. Mm -hmm. Basically what companies must do now is to reassess their strategy. They must look at the potential that AI enables their companies and then prepare their people. Otherwise, uh, for especially for those jobs that has more routine tasks, you are going to have AI augment those aspects of the task, but it's going to impact strongly on, on jobs like data entry, customer service, those jobs that are less creative and do not require human ingenuity for problem solving like social work is going to be greatly impacted. And that's where the issue is. Companies must have like a, a strategy that looks at how to play in this new era of business where AI is on the fall. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about job losses and there's, there's so much fear <laughs> amongst uh, employ, employ, employees wondering what's going to happen next once uh, countries adopt AI. But the, there's, there's not just losses, right? The opportunities with the emergence of AI. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, so what we always tell the companies is to look at the three Ps. You'd have to scope the potential what AI enables you to do that otherwise, because of a huge investment in talent, it would be so difficult to acquire talent for those things. And then once you do it, you need to look at your people. You basically have to look at AI as, um, as, as an alternative to running your workforce in that you build human-centered solutions that are AI-powered because we do not see a significant threshold where AI poses a threat, if the people are prepared and trained to use AI as a business enabler. But when these are not done, and then the third P is the processes. Companies must start putting in um, the guardrails, the ethical guardrails and programs to make sure that copyrights are not infringed upon because AI can hallucinate when, when given the space. So like there's a lot of work. I see a lot of uh, creativity around how HR and uh, uh, companies are going to engineer their workforce around the new development. And, and this presents an exciting opportunity for everybody. They are going to be prompt engineering, uh, trainings go on, and, and workers must adopt a more scientific and curious approach to their work. If they are going to remain relevant in the next five years, then you, the individual, just like the company, would require a clear and compelling strategy 
to remain relevant. Otherwise, you cannot play in this space where AI is doing almost everything. Uh, interesting you say AI can hallucinate. Well, well let's talk about uh, at what point you, you talk about threshold uh, where AI becomes a threat to job security. It's, it's going to be at varying uh, degrees and at different times. For example, and it's going to be really gradual. I do not think the impact should be overblown in the job market if you have a very prepared workforce. Basically, what this would mean is that uh, the companies must do uh, skill gap audits and mm -hmm. find out where their the, uh, human capacity lacks in terms of critical thinking, creativity, problem solving, emotional intelligence. If you try prompting any AI, they tell you they are not, they don't have any emotions. So, so workers must prepare for the new wave of job opportunities that is coming up. You can take the example of what happened with Moderna. You had vaccine companies typically taking a decade, 10 years, to have their clinical trials approved mm -hmm. as being safe on humans. But during the COVID, you had in barely 44 days, genome sequences re uh, released by uh, uh, Chinese doctors on 11th January, by 24th February, the first trials were ready because Moderna, an AI company, had developed vaccines, a company that is run by a software engineer. So this is impacting everything. And we, we shouldn't see it as uh, something that is a threat. It's going to make people more creative, more efficient, more productive. It frees up the human being to focus on what is important. So companies must prepare. The focus must be on change management. What can we do to make sure that uh, multimedia or the company I'm working in remains relevant in the next five years? And that will you know, take a whole overhaul of strategy. So the workforce is uh, going to become uh, increasingly automated, and that means that workers have to upskill to stay uh, relevant. Absolutely. So what can they do? I mean, how, how do they go about When the skill audit is done, the, the first area I see a lot of learning going on is around big data, and then they have to understand also about machine learning. Okay, the generative AI has to do with machine learning, training the machines to think and do what otherwise would take humans a lot of work to do. So every worker, and especially if an HR manager wants to run an audit, you are looking at the four Ds. Mm -hmm. What is dirty, dull, difficult, and dangerous? That the worker, dirty, dull, difficult, dangerous. And dangerous. Maybe dangerous in the sense that um, if he makes the wrong decision, and does not uh, consider all the correlation and the prehistoric data is going to impact the company. You need AI to do these things. If the strategy is done right, it's going to be a focus on augmenting task of workers with AI. You have to find out how do I aid the worker to be at his best. AI basically equalizes. And for all the successful companies worldwide that has you know, gleaned some benefits from AI, the investment has been in algorithms also, maybe 20, 30%. But 70 to 80% of, of investment is in people. The people training, the processes, making sure they are ethical guardrails and responsible use of AI. So, so the, the, the field is now very exciting for everybody in the knowledge-based economy. You have to train and upskill. Well, uh, we are out of time, but the next time I speak to you, I want to know about the specific skills that people have to um, adopt during these times where we talk about artificial intelligence. Uh, we'll continue this conversation, certainly. Thank you so much, uh, you, Philip Gamay, who is uh, your chief executive, right, of yeah. uh, web and software. I appreciate your time with us. Thanks for joining us in studio. And that's uh, the marketplace. Thanks for watching, everyone. There is more news, as always, on our website, myjoyonline.com or slash business. Bank of Ghana assures savings and loans companies of support to address high MPLs funding costs. That's from the annual general meeting of the Ghana Association of Savings and Loans uh, companies. You can read more about that on myjournaline.com forward slash business. Thanks for watching.